how is everybody doing? Welcome to the channel today. Today's topic is going to be optics. A lot of people come to me, they say, Jay, you know, I'm just getting into firearms. Uh, I really don't know a lot about optics and I'm interested in getting one. Which one should I get? Well, we're going to talk about that today here on Untouchable City Prepper. Okay. All right. First off, I want to let everybody know I appreciate everybody tuning in to the channel. I'm going to work on bringing you uh, new content that's uh, dealing with urban survival. I know there's a lot of prepper channels out there, and I think that's cool. But I'm going to bring a more realistic point of view to things and things that you can apply to your everyday life. This is going to be an economically uh, based channel, which means basically... We don't have a lot of money. This is for people who don't have a whole bunch of money, who is just trying to get through uh, what may occur or what may happen throughout basic things in life and beyond. Okay, we're gonna have some fun topics. We're gonna have some realistic topics. But digressing, we're going on. We're gonna talk about optics today. Okay. Um, some people may not have a lot of money. All of these optics that you see right here, I'm gonna be honest with you. I got them all off of Amazon, y'all. I got them all off of Amazon. And I've had the expensive optics like Hollow Sun and other things like an expensive Olight and things like that. And I got to be honest with you, man. And that's one thing this, this channel is all about. These optics are just as good. Okay, they really don't have a, a really a name on them. You know, they might have uh, Picatinny on them. This one is Picatinny. And I think this one is, um, this one has no name. But you can find all of these optics here on Amazon. Um, and I, they all work great for me. Now, they're not going to be as good as something that you may pay six or $700 for. But each one of these optics are under are under a hundred dollars, and to me, one optic that I used to buy from like Hollow Sun was probably about between maybe four hundred to five hundred dollars, you know. And you get that, and you do get what you pay for. You know what I'm saying? But the average person does not have five hundred to six hundred dollars to spend on the optic i know that it was a point in time where i did have it but due to my current situation i don't think that it's logical right now to be spending six hundred dollars on the optic when you could be investing in something different so all of these optics you see right here even the one on my ar pistol and even the flashlight i got them all from amazon y'all and i'm gonna just start right here Okay, we got three different kind of optics, four different kind of optics, excuse me, four different kind of optics here. The first optic we're going to talk about is the small pistol MOA optic. Um, once again, got all of these on Amazon. And this one is primarily used on pistols. Um, I had this one on my shotgun for a little while. And it served its purpose real well. Um, a lot of people go with this one because it's small, it's compact, it's real good for small firearms. Um, you want to look at something like this, if you know you got a, a Taurus G3, uh, a SIG 365 maybe, um, a small lightweight, uh, you know, subcompact firearm. This is something that you want to look into. Real easy, you know, you hit this. Red dot comes on. Pretty simple. There's no, there's no special thing to it. You know, you mount it on the back of your pistol, hit the button, boom, you got your red dot. Real good. I use it on my shotgun. Uh, like I said, small compact firearms, small MOA, real light. Uh, most times, these are the more affordable. I use that term lightly because none of these are really affordable if you're going for the higher end stuff like the brand names but these tend to be the more affordable red dots 
okay? Pistol, pistol caliber carbine slash shotgun, okay? Second, we're going with the red dot. Uh, the red dot with the riser on there. These, I use these, actually, I had a lot of fun with these on my uh, my 22 LR rifle. Uh, my 22 LR, my 22 AR, <laughs> to be exact. Um, so I had a lot of fun with these. Um, you could use these. I would suggest using these with possibly 5.56 five, or uh, probably 22 LR, 22 Magnum. Maybe a big game hunt, like maybe a 44 Magnum, uh, 357 Mag. You know, some people put these on there. Maybe a Desert Eagle. Um, I've seen these on those type of calibers, but I think you'll get a better experience probably with it from like on an AR-15 platform. Um, something within a, I would say a 10 to 16 inch barrel length. And these are pretty cool, man. You basically, you just mount it. Um, you turn this dial and then you got your MOA which is going your MOA settings which you got on there which is 1 through 10 and basically that's just going to determine whether how dark you want your red dot you know what I'm saying you really don't want to make it too dark it's kind of hard to explain because you can't see it through here but um, it determines how dark you want your red dot you don't want to make it too dark. You don't want it too light. You want to be able to see it. And I like these a lot. Um, yeah. And you can get pretty accurate groupings with this. And I would suggest using these for possibly, you could use these for home defense, um, maybe target practice, and things like that. I wouldn't really use them too much for hunting in my opinion um but it's a good this show good overall do-it-all optic right here um, but it has no this one does not have any zoom or magnification on it but it is good okay all right then we're going with the long range scope like you see the one i got on my ar pistol now you're going into a little bit more uh, in detail with your optic on this one okay because this one has a little bit of uh, has iron sights up here a little not really iron sights but it got a little cider on here um, where you can kind of look through and you can kind of square up where you want to shoot which I like that um, then you got a zoom magnification where you can zoom in and zoom out Okay, then you got your little Picatinny rail right here. You got your rail where you can mount maybe another one on here. And if you, if I really wanted to, which I might do later, I could mount that optic on there. And then I have me a, a red dot and I have a scope on there. Um, to me, that's a little bit too much going on, but some people do it. Um, I don't want to do it because it just, it'd be too much for me. But I have done it, but I, I don't really... I don't really need all of that on there. You know what I'm saying? This uh, this will pretty much get my job done, and I'm fine with that. Um, so you got a zoom magnification. You got a reticle when you look inside of your scope. Okay, a lot of scopes gonna have a reticle on there, and this one in particular, you can turn your reticle green or red. And excuse me, and it's. It's good for long range. Um, I really wouldn't use a scope in the house, although some people would. I don't know how big your house is. My house isn't that big. You need a scope. But if you want to use a scope, do one. Go ahead and use it. But I wouldn't say that would be the primary function of, of a scope on your rifle. Um, definitely using a scope for outdoors, long range, deer hunting. Uh, things of that nature. I put one specifically on my AR pistol to to try out uh, to just try to get accurate groupings with a 7.5 inch barrel. Um, and I'm pretty impressed, man. I could I could pretty much get pretty much groupings with with the AR pistol. I'm gonna get a video for that for you guys later on. 
And yeah, that's what you want to use your scope for. Um, outside hunting, anything long range, basically. You know, you're shooting up to probably over 100 yards or something close to that or, or beyond. That's what you want to use your scope for. All right. Now we go into my favorite one, my holographic. And I love these things, man. Um, you could change what kind of reticle you want on here. I don't know if you guys can see it, but, you know, it's one with a circle with a cross. Then you got a cross. Then you got a little circle. And then you just got your regular red dot. Um, this is the big screen TV of your red dots or your MOAs or so to speak. It's called a holographic one, and um, I like it, man. I like it. I'm going to put this one on my AK. I'm going to do a video for that on my AK, and um, I like this one because I get to see more, and I can kind of change what kind of reticle is um, in front of me when I'm shooting. You know, I like different reticles when I'm shooting different calibers, so... It's pretty handy. I like it a lot, man. And um, yeah, it's it's pretty good. I like it, man. It, you can it's it's very versatile. I could put it like that. But with that one, just like the scope, it's more it's a lot more heavier. You know, these two are light. The scope and the holographic are heavy. You know, and weight is an uh, extra pound. May not seem like a lot on your rifle or your pistol. But believe me, man, it, it matters a lot, especially if you're going to be carrying gear and, and maybe running and some other stuff, man. You know, extra pounds is pain, you know what I'm saying? And it's going to be harder to get on target when your gun is heavier. It may look cooler, but believe me, you know, you more than likely you're setting up your rifle to save your life. So keep that in mind. Other than that, that's today's show, uh, and I'm glad that you guys tuned in. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and this is Untouchable Prepper signing out.